It happened on September 10th, 1955, right before the very first episode of Gunsmoke aired on CBS. And the entire cast of Gunsmoke, well, they couldn't believe what they were seeing on TV. What am I talking about? And what does it have to do with John Wayne? Well, give me a couple of minutes and I'll fill you in on all of the details. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Dave Sundstrom, and I like to think of myself as something of a pop culture historian, especially when it comes to music, movies, and television. Simply put, I love talking about this stuff. All right, with that said, let's get rolling. When Gunsmoke premiered on CBS in 1955, it was an immediate hit, not just because of the phenomenal cast, which included James Arness, Amanda Blake, and Dennis Weaver, but also because it was already very popular as a radio drama starring William Conrad as Marshal Matt Dillon, protector of Dodge City, Kansas. The radio program was originally envisioned as a hard-boiled western. William Paley, the chairman of CBS at the time, was a huge fan of Philip Marlowe and had requested a show that would be Philip Marlowe in the Old West. Whether Bill Paley got what he wanted or not is subject to debate. But Gunsmoke did feel different than other westerns at the time. Remember Bill Paley's name, folks. We'll talk about him again later on in the video. One other thing worth mentioning about the radio program before we get to the meat of this story is the feller on the far left. Do you recognize him? Yep, it's Howard McNear who played Doc Adams on the Gunsmoke radio show. A few years later, he would gain even greater fame as Floyd the Barber on the Andy Griffith show. Howard was so great on that show. I've talked at length about him and his character Floyd in a couple of other videos. I will post links to them at the end of this video. But let's get back to Gunsmoke. Holy cow, this show was such a massive hit for CBS. Initially running for just 30 minutes and filmed in black and white, the show would later expand to a full hour and transition to color. All told, Gunsmoke ran for 20 seasons on CBS. And of course, the success of the show had a lot to do with this guy, James Arness. He wasn't the only one that was considered for the role. Raymond Burr, Denver Pyle, and William Conrad all auditioned, but none of them seemed right to bring the character to life on television. There has been a rumor out there that John Wayne was considered for the role, but that isn't true. He did, however, have an opinion regarding who would be good. According to none other than acting great Jimmy Stewart, he was in a meeting with the man tasked with making Gunsmoke happen, a guy named Charles Warden, when John Wayne popped into his office. As the three men conversed, Warren told Wayne about an actor that had auditioned for the role that he thought would be good. That actor was none other than James Arness, who Duke had worked with in a couple of different feature films. And you know what? According to Jimmy Stewart, John Wayne enthusiastically agreed that James Arness was the right man for the role. In fact, Wayne was such a fan of the idea that this happened. Good evening. My name's Wayne. When I first heard about the show Gunsmoke, I knew there was only one man to play in it. James Arness. On September 10th, 1955, John Wayne shocked the heck out of James Arness by making a brief on-screen appearance ahead of the show's debut. None of the cast, who were all gathered at Arness's home to watch the premiere, knew that it was going to happen. So when John Wayne showed up on their TV screens, well, they all just kind of freaked out. No one thought that a star of John Wayne's magnitude would do something like that. But it was truly appreciated by each and every cast member, and especially by Arness, who saw Wayne's kind and gracious act as the ultimate vote of confidence. And the rest, as they say, is television history. When you look at this show's massive run, it is amazing the number of TV and movie stars that made one or more guest appearances. Here's a random bit of trivia. Did you know that the actors who played Kirk, Spock, McCoy, and Scotty on Star Trek all showed up on Gunsmoke. In fact, Nimoy showed up a couple of times. Betty Davis, Dennis Hopper, Adam West, Johnny Whitaker, Gary Busey, Bruce Dern, Barbara Eden, Harrison Ford, Jodie Foster, Buddy Ebsen, Richard Dreyfuss, Nick Nolte, Charles Bronson, Cicely Tyson. Well, the list just goes on and on. Remember this guy. Yep, it's William Paley. I told you earlier that he'd show back up again. In 1967, for a brief period of time, Gunsmoke started to struggle in the ratings. 
so much so that there was conversation about canceling it. However, when Paley's wife, Babe, heard that the show was in danger of leaving the air, well, she strongly encouraged her husband to find a way to keep it on. So Paley looked at the schedule and found a new time slot that he thought would work better for the gang from Dodge City. The show that was on at that time had already been informally renewed for another season, but nothing official. However, the producer of that show had been told to plan on a fourth season. The show that I'm talking about is Gilligan's Island. Once Gunsmoke moved to Monday nights, the show's ratings shot right back up to the top and truthfully, it did much better than Gilligan's Island ever did in that time slot. So as the network executives contemplated what to do, they ultimately made the decision to leave Gilligan and the rest of the castaways stranded on that tropical island. It would take a television movie years later for them to finally be rescued. Alright, I've already talked about how good the cast of the show was, but I've got to say that the guy there on the left, Dennis Weaver, was especially good during those first nine seasons. He left the show to star in another program called Kentucky Jones, which didn't work out all that well for him. Of course, later on, he would find success again in McLeod. All right, now it's your turn. So what do you think about John Wayne's somewhat shocking, definitely surprising act of kindness? Let me know in the comments section. And if you have other memories of Gunsmoke, don't hesitate to share them as well. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a like and maybe even subscribe to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly television from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.